Hey guys, Micah here with ebikeschool.com, and today I am excited to show off the newest version of the Vruzen V2.0 solderless battery building kit. This is the V2.1 kit, and there are a few changes that have been updated to the kit. First of all, the caps are a little bit longer, and they're designed to slide together a little bit easier. But the biggest change, and this is what I'm really excited about, is that the new V2.1 kit comes with barrel bolts that are designed to compress the two halves of the battery together and keep the battery uh, connected in all sorts of high vibration environments. So where the battery is going to be bouncing around like on vehicles, uh, the barrel bolts are designed to apply continuous compression on the battery. And this is one of the things that people have asked for the most with the Vruzen kit, is to provide some type of positive compression reassurance. And in the past we've used things like zip ties or uh, compression plates, sandwich plates that go on either side of the battery, but we wanted to design something that was built into the kit, and that's where these barrel bolts come in. Now, I'm gonna show you how to use this kit, and to do that, I'm gonna build a 36 volt, 10 amp hour battery. So let's get to it. I'm going to use LG MJ1 18650 cells today that also came from Vruzen.com, and I'll begin the build process by checking that they're all the same voltage or very close in voltage. If you buy new cells, then they should be. If you're using used cells, then you'll need to be more careful about just making sure that they're all at similar voltages. Next, I get to start playing with the caps, and I'll begin by making parallel groups using three cells in parallel. I'll align the caps by making sure that they're all oriented in the same way. I like to put the dovetails at the top and to the right, like you can see here. Once they're similarly aligned, I simply slide the caps together. Now I can put my battery cells in. But notice something, on one side here we have empty sockets, and on the other side we have the dovetails. Same thing here with the orange caps. Dovetails on one side, empty sockets on the other. Now when we put these together with the cells in between, we want to make sure that there's dovetails on one side and sockets on the other. We don't want them aligned with both sides showing dovetails or both sides showing sockets. We want them flipped, and you'll see why in a minute. Now I'll load my first three cells in. Again, I'm doing three cell parallel groups here, which will give me 10 amp hours, but you can do as many cells in parallel as you want. The positive end will go in the orange side, of course, and I'll put all three cells in and just use my hand strength to push them in one at a time. So now that I've got three orange caps on the bottom with the dovetails showing, I'll make sure to put my black caps on with the socket showing. And then you just push the caps on. Here it helps to take a block of wood or something rigid to push the caps down. You don't need clamps like in previous versions of the kit, you can just use your body weight and your hand strength like I'm doing here. You can also take a mallet and gently tap on the wood too if you're a smaller person and you don't feel like you can adequately push the caps down yourself, but most people should be fine though using this method. And you'll know you've got the cells all the way in to the spring contact when you can read the voltage of the cells through the cap terminals. Now I'm going to keep making my parallel groups of three cells, and I'll just confirm that they have a connection by measuring the voltages on all of these cells at the end. Once I've got 10 groups of parallel cells that I'll need to make a 10S or 36 volt battery, I'll orient the cell groups so every group is alternating from positive to negative like this. And now I'll be able to slide the groups together because I oriented the dovetails and sockets opposite from top to bottom. That's why this is important. So now I'm going to go ahead and slip each group into the next group like this, and move along down the line. They should go together fairly nice and smoothly, though sometimes you have to persuade them a little bit, but they usually just slip together pretty easily. Now I get to start using these barrel bolts, which are the really cool new part of the V2.1 kit. And the idea here is that you want to distribute them evenly across your pack. You do not need them in every single hole between the cells. It's fine if they're every two cells or every three cells. However many bolts you have, you just want to spread them out evenly. So choose a pattern that looks pleasing to your eye. I went like this with mine. If you have a larger pack, like Dar, one of our early beta testers did, then you'll have even more options for spreading out the bolts like he did here. The goal is just to distribute them fairly evenly so that you have a nice amount of clamping across the pack. Now one thing to note here is that when you go to tighten these bolts down, you do not need to over tighten them. If you go too far, which I'll demonstrate here, what you'll do is you'll end up just forcing the caps back apart. So before you reach this point, you'll have put a decent amount of pressure into the bolts. And once you start feeling a good amount of resistance, that's enough. You don't need to crank these things down like crazy. You can always go until you just start seeing the caps beginning to spread. That's another option. You just don't need to force these things down super hard. You know, just moderately tight is enough here. Okay, so now we've placed our barrel bolts and we can begin to lay our bus bars. 
I'll skip this first group here because this is going to be my minus one terminal and I'll have the wire clamps here. I'll move on to my plus two and minus three terminals and I'll add my figure eight style bus bars here, starting with the series connection and then the parallel connection next. See how we get this nice figure eight here? Then I'll add my nuts to hold down those bus bars. Then I'll continue down the pack, adding the rest of these figure eights. Next I'll add my wire clamps to the minus one and the plus ten terminals, which are the pack's main positive and negative terminals. And then I'll flip the pack over to do the bus bars on the other side. Before I flip the pack over to do the bus bars on the other side, I'll check my connections. Anywhere I have two groups connected in series, I will not make that same series connection on the other side. Anywhere I have a gap, like here, that means the bus bars don't make a series connection, and so I will make that series connection on the other side. So now I flip the pack over, and I'll make those figure eights on the other side. Here you need to be very careful though, because the opposite side of the pack is now connected, and thus it's live. So you don't want to accidentally short your pack by putting a bus bar in the wrong spot. If you place a bus bar and it sparks, that's the wrong spot. I generally place my bus bars slowly and gingerly, just in case I've somehow made a mistake and I chose the wrong spot. But if you're careful and you go slowly, it should be fairly obvious that you stick to the pattern here and you won't have an issue. Once I have all of my figure eight bus bar connections done, then I've basically finished the cell connections of this pack. This is theoretically a live battery now, though we'll want to add a BMS next because we're responsible battery builders here. I'm using a 10S BMS because this is a 10S 36 volt pack. This BMS is from Vruzen.com as well, but you can get a BMS from a number of places. After I have it on the battery, I'll connect the B- wire to the negative terminal of the battery. Then I can connect the balance wires, starting with the black wire, which is the negative one wire. You can add ring terminals onto these balance wires to put them onto the posts on the caps, or you can just stick the wire in under the bus bar and tighten the bus bars down, like I'm doing here. Then I'm actually going to skip the next wire, which is the plus one wire, that's the first red wire, and I'll do the third wire, which is the second red wire, and that's the plus two balance wire. Then I'll skip the next wire, and I'll do the plus four, and I'll continue doing every other wire on this side of the battery. You can go in order, but this just keeps me from having to flip the battery back and forth to get to those odd number cells. Once I finish all of the even numbered cells on this side of the battery, then I'll go back and do the odd numbered cells by flipping the battery over. Always consult the wire diagram for your BMS. These Vruzen BMSs have wiring diagrams on the product page that will help you make the right connections. Once the balance wires are connected, I can then connect the discharge connector to the positive terminal of the battery, and the negative wire of the discharge connector gets connected to the P- wire of the BMS. The charge connector comes next, and I often forget to include it in the positive discharge connector, but you can always just solder the red wire from the charge connector onto the wire clamp afterwards, or connect it under a nut. It just has to be somehow connected to the positive terminal. And the negative wire of the charge connector then gets connected to the C- wire on the BMS. Lastly, I like to use some more capped on tape to hold down the wires, and then add some foam around the battery to help protect it from bumps and getting jarred around like on an e-bike. And finally, I close off the battery with some heat shrink. Because I don't have a piece of heat shrink here long enough to go around the ends of the battery, I just cut some heat shrink and make my own ends. I tape them in place over the ends of the battery, and then I slide the long piece over the entire battery, and I heat it all up together, which gets me nice 360 degree coverage for my battery. So that was pretty easy, right? Our own 36 volt 10 amp hour battery using the Vruzen V2.1 kit, which you can find at vruzen.com. Now of course you can build any size battery, you just need to put more or less cells in series to get different voltages, or uh, more or less cells in parallel to get different capacities. In fact, before I sign off, I just want to share a couple quick clips here that were sent to me from some of the early Vruzen V2.1 kit beta testers showing some different size packs and applications for the batteries. Here's the SRM University racing team preparing to build their electric race car battery, and the Electro X team from Galgodius University is also powering their solar car project with the V2.1 kit, and here's Daryl Zubot's electric paramotor battery, which is definitely one of the larger ones I've seen and should be a pretty epic build as well. And there's also the Team 4ZE whose electric racing cart also got the Vruzen V2.1 treatment. So there are a lot of possibilities out there for some pretty intense use cases for the V2.1 kit. 
Last but not least, it is time to announce the winner of last week's book giveaway. And the winner is... Vancation. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like. Either books on building batteries, solar power projects, e-bikes, or my newest book on electric motorcycles. Let me know where to send it. And anybody else who wants to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment below, anything you want to say, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. Thanks for watching everybody. See you next time.